Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is episode 51 of Friday Morning Ramblings. We're gonna walk the garden. I'll just show you what I'm doing, talk about some different tips. First thing is if you don't have a lot of space, these are flower boxes that I made three or four years ago. They weren't expensive. The wood back then, probably for each bo box, cost maybe seven bucks. Anyway, four to six inches deep. I kind of just refresh the soil every other year. I'm growing radishes in here. The depth, four to six inches, you know, whatever, four inches wide. I can never get the measurements right there. Works for radishes, uh, smaller carrots. You could even put beets down here. You could put lettuces in here. This is a lot of space, believe it or not. You just have to work on making sure it stays watered as it warms up. But you can grow a lot in a space like this. And I wanted to, you know, present this again for people that are just getting started. Maybe you don't have a lot of space, but you could build, you know, a flower box just like this. These are all French breakfast radishes. We're also getting towards the summer. It may not feel like that in many places. But I wanted to show you these containers. These are two and a half inch containers. And last year they sat out and the sun melted them. So when it's getting up to 80 degrees and the sun is beating down on your black, black plastic um, seed starting cells or containers, they're absorbing heat. Now this probably won't happen with plants in there because the soil cools the plastic. But what happens is the water evaporates really quickly. So on a hot sunny day, you may have to water these two or three times or your plants are going to get damaged. The other thing that I think is really interesting, if you're growing your cool weather crops in the little six inch uh, cells, I mean the six pack cells, you know, the small starting cells, when that sun is beating on them, it's heating up the root system. And I'll show you an example towards the end of the video when we get to the other side. My pak choy or bok choy in those six cells are already flowering. And that's because they were tricked into thinking it's a lot warmer than it is because that sun was warming up the root system. And that's when your cool weather crops flower. Lettuces, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, they all start to flower when the soil warms up. So if you have your seed starts in these black containers, just like you know, right down there, they could heat up, think it's past the cool weather, and then they start the flower and you don't get a really nice crop of lettuce because it, it decided to flower. So that being said, here's my lettuce crop. The root systems are going to stay cool in here. These don't heat up like you might hear. People worry about these metal beds heating up. There's a fellow who has a wonderful YouTube channel from Australia. He only grows in these. He's got the Australian sun his plants do fine. The whole key to wanting to have lettuce that looks like this is water. And I'm gonna stress that again this year, is watering is probably more important than tweaking fertilizing perfectly. The more regular water you give all your plants, the better they do. They need that water to move the nutrients into the root system and into the plant. And sometimes when it's cooler, like in April, May, we tend to let watering go. The plants survive, but they don't thrive. And that's the thing that you want with a garden is you want your plants not just to get by on one inch of water a week. I mean, that's what you always hear. You want them to really produce. And you may have to water two, three inches of water for tomato plants. You may have to water these every other day to really get them growing. Just depends on what's going on. Love the metal beds too. If you want to check out these beds, check out the video description. These are from Vegega, V-E-G-E-G-A dot com. Um, I really like them, and I wish I discovered them a little bit sooner because um, I like the design presence, you know, in the garden, and I think I would have used them in other places. So all my plants are out. Foil trays are a little bit better for seed starting outdoors now, in my opinion, because they reflect the light back and they don't heat up as much. But everything looks good. Peppers look good. This is what sun damage looks like a little bit. If you have this on your leaves, that's just sun skull, nothing to worry about. These all look a little bit dry, you know, taking a look at them. So they're going to get watered and I'm also going to feed them. You can see the eggplant is looking a little bit yellow. So you want to just keep an eye on your seed starts. They absorb not only the water out of these containers really quickly, they also take the nutrients out more quickly. Inside, I'm always talking about using less water-soluble fertilizer. 
Now that these are getting rained on, that they're in bigger containers, you can up the strength of the water soluble. I'm even using straight fish emulsion on these now, which is a 511 NP and K. So when it gets colder at night, if it's approaching that 32 degree mark, I have these in a cold frame, of course. These other plants will have to come in or go somewhere to protect them. But I just want to stress again, if I close this, they're protected at night. If I leave them covered, two things can happen. If it's really sunny, 70, 80 degrees, the plants in there can bake and you can kill them off. The other thing is, is that if you have them closed and it doesn't get that hot, but a lot of humidity builds up in there, you can start getting different diseases on your plants because you're creating such a humid environment that maybe um, leaf spot or something starts on your different plants. So you want to really make sure that these open up either automatically or open them like this or whatever you have to do is to let air circulate and not to let them overheat. Strawberry containers, the vertical garden are doing well. You can see all the greenery coming in. I just learned, somebody corrected me, um, that I started alpine strawberries and they told me that these don't put out runners so I decided to move my alpines into containers I'm not sure how they reproduce but I grew these indoors you know started them in January they look really good I have them in two different containers and I have more growing so I'm gonna do the alpines in containers I have mixed strawberries over there and mixed strawberries in my vertical towers and the whole idea with that is just to have fruiting occur at different times so some will be early some will be late some will be through the entire season some will fruit just one time more lettuce in there that's bib lettuce and you can see where I was watering a little bit less the leaves started dying out and then I upped the watering in fact I'm gonna water this again even if I scratch under here it's still moist extra water for your leafy greens will make a huge difference so these will all get watered today this sections looking pretty good these are my hop vines they grow incredibly fast I think if you put a camera on here you could see them grow you know every day a couple of inches so naturally they're going to wrap up this pole that uh, telescopes to about 12 feet. I want to rein in the hops this year because it just spreads everywhere. So it becomes very invasive if you're going to plant it somewhere. Those are squirrel holes right there. They're digging for something. I like the hops, but it does get out of control. Time for the nectarine label to come off of there. The fruit trees look good. I planted up this section. That is actually globe artichoke, which I think is going to look cool. And then I put my ginger that I rooted uh, indoors in there. And again, if you start your ginger in bags indoors, you get a really nice jump to the season. Ginger likes the warmth, doesn't like the sun beating down on it. So I think these blueberry bushes will protect it from afternoon sun. Here's an example of the cascade hops. The other ones were uh, Chinook, I believe. You can just see how they spread everywhere, get into the fence all down the line so I'm gonna to have to pull all of that up but I am liking this section a whole lot and as I walk around I can see that I got a squirrel in here that's been looking for things more alpine strawberries set up these beds I have kohlrabi in the first one that's hardneck garlic back there and then I have the beds if you watch the last episode or the Monday morning episode these are all covered in weeds so they're pretty much under control. There's a couple of different things I want to show you. So I did a video on just using a weed whacker and taking the weeds down. And I said the shallow weeds that are more annual weeds are going to be killed off by the mulch. There's like two inches of mulch in here. What's going to come through are the tap-rooted weeds. So the dandelions are popping up. But now I can just go to one, two, three, four, five, six weeds that are popping through, dig them out and I didn't have to go and tear all the root systems out of this area. It was also a no dig garden. I'm gonna be putting my transplants, my tomato transplants in here. This garden will be fine. This is my flower area, my bug hotel that is actually slanting more backwards than I wanted uh, over time. I may fix that a little bit, but it's slanted backwards so that the water drains out of there and hopefully good insects kind of hang out in there. Weed Whacker, cut all this back. I'm trying to decide right now, even though I have wood chips that I got delivered back there for free, I paid up for the shredded hardwood. I'm thinking I wanna actually take this color 
and go all the way across. For some reason this year, I'm just liking the brown, and rather than breaking it up, um, I think I'm gonna buy the shredded hardwood or get it delivered to my house. Sunken container garden, bottoms cut out, two peppers in every that into every container. That's gonna be like 24 peppers in that small space. Cut back the weeds here, waiting for the asparagus to come up. I will cover just a lot of this with mulch. That will take care of most of the weed problems. Anything that pops through, I'll get rid of them. Now, you're going to see that I left piles around. I do recommend that too. It's like if we get started and you're doing a weeding project and then you're like, now I got to go dump the weeds or you're just thinking about that perfection, just throw the piles down. The whole goal was for me to weed that space and to weed that space back there. So I've got the piles down, didn't get to them yesterday. Maybe I'll get to them today, but they're just going to break down. So, you know, do what you can do. Now, what I wanted to show you was this bed. So this bed is a little bit higher. It's filled more with good quality soil. I did pull these out by hand because I let them get so tall that if I weed whacked them, it was just actually covering the whole um, weed eater and it just, you know, it wasn't working well. So this bed, if I put mulch on there now, it's not enough mulch to really smother the weeds out. So that's going to be a waste of time. You know, unlike where I, you know, did the beds over here. So I am going to get a shovel. I'm going to turn this over. I'm not going to be hurting anything because I'm just flipping it. I'm not pulverizing it down. Get this under control, level it out, and then I'll be planting my corn in here. It is okay to turn your soil when you have to turn it. So this is the fourth year of this garden. These are pretty much being uh, turned into no dig gardens because I don't need to do that now. If you have clay soil or heavy soil or rocky soil, you may have to turn it or kind of blend it together for the first couple of years till you get to that point where you don't have to dig it or turn it anymore. Nothing wrong with turning it like that. You just don't want to get that tiller out and just pulverize, you know, the top six inches every year because you are shredding every worm that's around there. You are just kind of messing up the air pockets and causing problems. Turning with a shovel, no big deal. You may have put leaves down last year all the leaves didn't break down that's okay along here will be tomatoes or some other transplanted crop so i just move that you know the leaves over to the right that becomes a mulch in this space i haven't decided what i'm going to put in here yet but i'm thinking about seeding it so if you're going to do seeds you have to move your mulched leaves or leftover shredded hardwood over to the side because your direct sowed seeds will grow better in just basic soil like this. Once they get to height, maybe I move them back, it becomes a mulch, it helps contain um, moisture in the soil. And that's a couple of the benefits, you know, of putting leaves down last year is they break down, it gets into your soil, but um, they also hang around and then you can use them as a mulch to help conserve water. This is kind of cool. Those are two sunflower seeds that were planted by birds when I had sunflowers around. So right now, sunflowers are starting to come up and I'm gonna let them kind of come up all over the place and then I'll strategically keep a few of them. I, I really like the way that looks. I haven't gotten to the beans yet. They're gonna be taken care of this weekend. But I think, you know, things are looking pretty good. I feel like I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. That's my apple tree. There's four different apples. Uh, grafted onto that trunk and you can see it's chaotic and that's because I really don't know how to prune well but it's also because the cicadas wrecked my fruit trees last year so I'm just kind of letting stuff grow letting them get their strength back and then I'm going to start pruning back weeded out my containers those are two window well covers or yeah they're window well covers here on the east coast if you have windows on the ground you can put these up against it and create a place for water to drain away from the house and stuff like that. Anyway, it's two of them, creates a nice circle, inexpensive way to create containers. Um, the metal raised beds, I like better. I like to look better. They're a little bit more expensive, but I do recommend looking for metal because they're gonna last 10, 20 years and it's a nice look. So purple cone flower, purple cone flower, yarrow back there. The other one that we're gonna come and pass by has um, Shasta daisies and Shasta daisies in there. So you can see the cone flower starting to come up. When that gets to be about 12 to 16 inches, I'm going to cut it back 
because I want the flowers to stay stockier on here this year so they still want bringing the bees but they're not flopping everywhere so you can cut your perennial flowers back and then you're going to kind of have to start over they're going to want to put out their flowers when the temperatures are right and they're going to be a little bit stockier and stronger and you won't have purple cone flower and shasta daisies flopping everywhere in the garden these are all waiting for my tomato plants I'm trying to decide what i'm going to do in here and i'm thinking of metal raised beds smaller ones like one space two space three space four space five and really maximizing this space with a new design change because this is okay but nice production for spinach but i'm just not really maximizing this space and i feel like i could do more in here with the metal raised beds still be able to get my wheelbarrow around still be able to tend them and just get more growth out of here so i'm kicking that idea around i also have coreopsis coming up one two three four so i will dig that up and i will move that to another place again the key to all of this is watering keep them well watered you're going to get lots of leafy green growth and it makes a big difference my bunching onions are all starting to come up my transplanted cilantro got beat up, but you can see all new green growth is coming in there. Same with the purple cabbage. I'm not growing cabbages this year. It just isn't really worth it. These got beat up, but they're sending out new flowers. And I'm just going to harvest, not flowers, uh, leaves. I'm just going to harvest those leaves and mix them into my salads. They're really good that way. You know, I'm satisfied with how things are going. This is the kale that I've been showing you from the beginning that I stripped down to just a stalk. It's all come back with a vengeance. And there's no white flies or any insects in there. And this is what I'm picking now. This is what I've been talking about. This is worth waiting for in your biennial kale is just picking, you know, the flower heads before they bloom. You can even pick them when they bloom. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's one, eight. And that's what I do. These all get put into salads, into scrambled eggs. Um, if I'm making a soup, these go in late so they don't get boiled away. And they're absolutely worth picking. And today they're gonna be breakfast. I'll come and pick a bunch of them. You can see the purple kale. So instead of ripping these out last fall and taking them out early spring I decided to strip the leaves back because they had white flies on there knowing that they're going to come back and grow and I'm going to have all this great stuff to harvest. That's the other container. Two purple coneflower and then the Shasta daisy on the right. Starting to get this area into shape. Watermelon radishes doing really well in there. And I'm really looking forward. I feel like I've turned that corner for spring, getting stuff under control so that I can kind of, oh, here's, so here's a mistake. So yesterday I filled these up with water to go water my onion seed starts and my other leek seed starts, which I forgot to water, almost killed them off. So they've been growing, they're recovered now. But sometimes I'm like, you know, I filled these up, ready to go water them because they were dry. And now I forgot to water them again. So I'm gonna have to take that over to those seed starts. Here's a look into the garden from the other gate. And you can see the weeds are finally under control. All kinds of stuff growing, more radishes in there, more peas in there, some of the kale that I seed started. So you're seeing everything that I started indoors. Some of these I've direct sown. This is a columbine that I grew from seed years ago. Purple top turnips, all kinds of different root crops in here. Things are looking good. I'm thinking about experimenting over there, trying to create something where I actually put my peppers out early, but in one space. So I know that there's probably going to be another frost coming. It always shows up, but I'll be able to protect them. But I'm going slow and steady with getting my peppers out, my tomatoes out. My tomato plants aren't even two inches tall yet, but I know in three weeks they're going to be ready to come out here and hopefully there's no more frost. You can do a whole tub of lettuce. This is lettuce that I started indoors. Keep it watered. I'm going to keep stressing that. You're going to be impressed if you increase the watering of your garden 
just one fold. You know, if you're watering twice a week when it's warm, water four times a week or even three times a week. That extra water is going to make a huge difference. You can see in here, everything is still moist on the soil surface. That's because I watered it again when I filled up those water containers that I forgot to take over to my onion seed starts. It's looking wonderful. Now they're going to keep almost doubling in size every couple of days. This is going to be where I just pick leaves for my garden or for my salads and I'm not going to let the kale get to full size or anything like that. Keep taking the leaves before the bugs show up and you kind of mess them up too. Of course you might end up eating a couple of bugs but that's perfectly fine. Pak choy in the ground and they were direct seeded on March 6th. Today's like around April 16th. They look pretty good. They're not flowering, no flower heads on them. Arugula, some butter crunch lettuce. You always love seeing worms. That means you got a nice healthy soil. Peas look good in here. Keep them watered. Now, a little bit of a difference. Like when I first put peas into the ground and it's colder, they don't like sitting in wet soil cold temperatures because it's real easy for the pea seeds to rot. So when I direct sow these, and that was you know, March 1st really, I water them in and I let them go. You know, if it goes on like seven, 10 days of not watering, I'll water them again. But you don't want these to stay soggy when they're getting started. Once they're started, you know, they germinate, break the surface, they're established, you can increase the watering and it really, really makes a difference. So along with the kale that I've been picking. The radishes are just about ready. They need probably another three or four days. They're still kind of small, but I could find a couple in there. These are the French breakfast wrap, uh, radishes. Started on the 1st of March. Now, French breakfast radishes can be ready in 25 days. It's been six weeks. The reason they're not to full size yet is because it took them a while to germinate. So, when you read on the back of a packet, you know, when the plants are mature, it's really from the point that they germinate and start growing. You can put the seeds in, they sit there for three weeks, that doesn't count towards the maturity date. They have to break the surface. And it does kind of make sense. So it's always the time that they germinate. And a lot of times too, even with tomato plants, it's the time that you get them into the ground as transplants and the warmth comes and they really start growing. The other thing like with tomato transplants is you may put them into the ground when frost is gone, but the ground's too cold, the temperatures aren't right, the tomato plants kind of struggle, they get a little bit of purple look to them because of the cold weather and they're just sitting there for two or three weeks. That two or three weeks doesn't count towards them becoming mature plants that are producing tomato plants. So it's germination, it's putting them into the ground, and it's putting them into the ground when the soil temperatures are correct so that the plant starts taking off and growing. So just keep that in mind. I always think that's interesting because sometimes people are like, these took forever to to mature and it said they would be, you know, mature in 25 days, 40 days. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of the squirrel. So these are onions that I just put in. You can see it, it's already started digging in this space. So when you have squirrels, there isn't much you can do except trap and release them because they can climb fences, they get into everything, and if you, you know, trap them, you take them away about five miles from your house, you let them go. Putting in globe artichokes back there, that's gonna look really cool. You can see that they've dug up, or he or she dug up, some of the onions, so I'll replace that. When you're planting your onions, and I just did a video on this, or your leeks, you wanna water these every other day for a good seven, 10, 14 days to help them really get established. So my seed starts, the onions look good now, but you can see a lot of death down there. That's because I forgot to water them. So I had to wait a couple of weeks for them to get back up to size. So, and I'm gonna just say it out loud so I remember, I gotta go water those seed starts. I have probably five more trays up there of onions. I'm going to have onions everywhere and I'm going to kind of push that companion planting idea that the more onions and garlic you have in your garden, the less pests 
that you have. And I'm not a 100% believer in that. Um, you have to really get the right companion plant for it to work, but we're gonna see what happens. In here is my winter sowed, winter sown, cool crops. And you can see there's some good you know, lettuce in there. Spinach looks a little bit spindly. Well, there's the pak choy, and you can see the flower heads coming out. They were started when it was freezing out and because of the warmth of the sun is beating down on that black plastic, they've already started flowering. I would recommend highly never buying bok choy or pak choy or the Chinese heading cabbages as seed starts at the big box stores because that's what's going to happen. You're going to spend money, you're going to put them in the ground, they've been baking in the sun, and you're just going to get flowers. You're not going to get a big head of cabbage. Let's go over to my composting area. I want to talk about that a little bit before we finish up. If you have the space to compost, or even have a family member or friend that may have space, maybe set something up. I mean, it'd be a pain to kind of pull the compost to your house, but it's a lot less expensive than buying it in bags, a fertilizer, buying bag compost, and you know what's going in there. So this has been piled in here for four years now. I haven't pulled anything out. I just keep piling stuff in. Eventually this is going to be amazing stuff down there and it's probably ready to come out, at least the bottom half. These are more of my active piles. Just cut the grass for the first time. I don't put any chemicals on my grass. I don't do weed and feed. I'm just letting it naturalize over. So threw down some grass that will get incorporated into the browns that were left behind, the mostly composted compost that was left behind, and that's all going to get moved over to here. So I'm really excited. You know, I'm going to have more compost than I need this year. It's finally kind of all in place. It's all breaking down. Every bed will get an inch or two of fresh compost in about a month or two. And I just have it set up. You know, I have a lot of space. I understand that. Um, not everybody has it. You don't need everything I'm showing you now. This pile is perfectly fine. You know, something that's protected so the wind doesn't blow it away. Keep it moist. The design that I did for these, the uh, only fail on it would be is that I would have just left more space for rainwater to get in there. And at some point, I said this last year, I'm going to just drill holes in there just to let more water in. Moisture is your friend when it comes to compost. You don't want it super soggy, but you want it to stay moist so the microbiology and all that can do its thing. But I'm really excited, you know, which is one reason I like sharing this with all you guys because, you know, when I was cutting the grass, all I thought about is, look at all the grass I'm going to have for compost. And I think this looks great. These are the leaves. This is probably the easiest way to compost. These were filled, or this pen was filled all the way to the top with my leaves from last year, and now it's dropped all the way down here. That means it's breaking down. It's gonna be wonderful stuff. I'll show you some completed leaf compost in a second. Planted this up yesterday with my seed starts. This is gonna be where I'm doing my series on gardening for a family of four. At some point, either today or tomorrow, we'll be filling that bed, planting it up for that series, getting all my root pouches set up for different plants. And I might as well show you the mushroom garden too. If you have a shady area, growing mushrooms does work. I'm growing wine caps in here. They're not here yet, but this is a nice space. It stays shady. You can put in spawn for wine caps, oyster mushrooms, bales of straw, wood sawdust, shredded hardwood. All works really well for wine cap mushrooms. Here's some of my leaf mold or leaf compost. Anything that breaks down is called compost. If it's a cold process and it's being broken down by mold, it's still compost. So in here, I just dug through here because I had to reshoot this part of the video, but I know that it's looking great. This is all going to go into my garden this year. This is two years old. This is what I put in here um, towards the end of last year. This isn't going to be ready till October, but it's going to break down just like the stuff in here. And these trash cans were filled to the top. I was just digging through this one. It's not quite nearly broken down enough yet, but with the warmth of the summer coming, this is going to continue to sink down. It's going to break down and it's going to just look like this. So in this little space, you can use leaves 
and really make leaf compost. It works really, really well. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And if you're collecting grass from the curb, make sure you know no chemicals were sprayed on there. Because if a weed and feed went down, you bring the grass to your compost pile, you put it in your garden, the weeding chemicals are going to impact your plants and it can make them look curled, distressed, it won't kill them off, but they're definitely good to suffer. So don't bring in grass that you don't know whether or not has been treated. Thanks for watching again and please check out the seed shop at therustedgarden.com.